It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now! I'm starving! On the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby. This is the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. We are, of course, presented by my friends over at DraftKings. Love those dudes. Love all of you that check in every single week on this show. Obviously, I got a bunch of them part of the network. Ross Tucker Football Podcast, three days a week. Looking forward to Greg Cosell tomorrow as we talk about his Tier 2 quarterbacks which I think is interesting to make that differentiation with the civilian GOAT GC, Greg Cosell. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the Even Money Betting Podcast as well as the College Draft Podcast with my guy Emery Hunt's Tier 2 quarterbacks. J.J. McCarthy, his 7th ranked quarterback. Pretty interesting. Definitely check out the College Draft Podcast, Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Even Money Betting, all of them. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL on social media. Those of you that listen or watch the Ross Tucker football podcast know how you can be a winner and get something real nice for your family or for yourself. Sign picture. These press passes are so cool. Nobody else you know has them. Make sure you're spreading the word via social media or taking advantage of any of the sponsors you hear on any of the shows or just click the sponsor tab when we post the show. The link tree link comes up and whatever. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We're at Ross Tucker Pod. The star of this show, Joe Dolan. I make no bones about it. I'm a huge fan, have been for a while. You can check him out on social media at FG underscore Dolan. He's the original fantasy gangsta. And I have the articles to prove it with him being either ranked number one or top five over the last 10 years amongst all fantasy analysts Of course, the code for his website, fantasypoints.com, is 24FEAST. Check that out when you get a chance. All right, Joe, today we're doing a little free agency preview, right? So it's Wednesday, March 6th. Monday, the legal tampering period starts. Then free agency officially starts next Wednesday. By the way, just a programming note. Rather than trying to do it on the fly next Wednesday while all these things are happening and guys are getting signed, we'll wait till the 20th and we'll go through the big free agent moves on the 20th, right? So just to kind of set your clock for this show, today's the free agency preview. A week from now, we're actually going to dive into what Joe, what some of his takeaways were from the 2023 season. We'll let the dust settle a little bit before we dive into the stuff we want to talk about with the free agent moves that are made. That'll be about a week into free agency, so a lot of the guys will have already landed in their spots. I guess my first question, Joe, if I'm a loyal listener or viewer, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL of the Fantasy Feast podcast is, Why do we need a free agency preview? What is the value of a free agency preview? Do we just wait until we know where these guys are? Or is there value in talking about what we think of these guys at this stage of their career before they have a landing spot? Well, first and foremost, Ross, it's content, baby. You know all about content. Uh, This is uh, is stuff that... uh... People are going to be able to listen to, hear who's a free agent, what's coming up. Now, there's also sickos out there who are playing best ball right now. So, um, people playing best ball right now like to think that there's an edge in knowing who's a free agent. You know, maybe, oh, I'm a little scared that this guy, you know, Saquon Barkley's unsigned. I don't know where he's going to go. Josh Jacobs is unsigned. I don't know where he's going to go. You might want to, you might think that, hey, I like the fact that the salary cap went up a big number. You know, maybe some teams are going to splurge on running backs where they might not have splurged before and and try to get those guys in an ideal fantasy spot. But mostly it's just fun to talk about, Ross. I mean, like, hey, it's fun, always fun to speculate. This is what, I mean, look, 
back in the day, you know, message boards, that's all they did. Hey, are we going to go get this guy? Are we going to go get that guy? Twitter, Reddit, all those message boards and, and forums like that, that's all they talk about. That's what all the morning shows talk about. Hey, are we going to sign this quarterback? Do we need, are we going to sign a quarterback? Are we going to draft a quarterback? That's, it's just fun to talk about. And it's fun to know where these players are at this, this stage in their careers and, and figuring out where they might fit in like a puzzle piece. Let's talk about some of these free agent quarterbacks. And uh, let's start with Kirk Cousins. Just to peel back the curtain a little bit here, Joe and I are recording this a little bit early because of some travel that I've got coming up. So a little bit early. But as when we're recording this, Kirk Cousins, 35 and a half years old. This is interesting. I'm looking at Spotrack. They do a good job. And both... Kirk Cousins and Ryan Tannehill are both like 35 and a half, Joe. They're almost the exact same age. It's wild. Let's talk about those guys from a fantasy perspective and from a potential landing spot perspective. Why don't you start with Cousins? Yeah, well, um, first and foremost, Kirk Cousins has been a much better fantasy quarterback over the recent years than Ryan Tannehill. Um, Kirk Cousins is the ultimate point guard, in my opinion. You get weapons around Kirk Cousins, he's going to produce. Um, He went down after just, unfortunately, eight games um, in the 2023 season, but he was on pace to throw a career-high number of touchdowns. He had 18 touchdowns in eight games. Over the course of the full season, that would have been 38 touchdowns um, if he played the full season, which would have topped his previous career high of 35, which happened in his second season with the Vikings. Kirk Cousins over the last five seasons with the Vikings prior to getting injured, 30 touchdowns, 26 touchdowns, 35 touchdowns, 33 touchdowns, 29 touchdowns, consistently above 66% completion percentage. Like, I know there's the primetime Kirk thing and all that, and, you know, like a lot of the conversations are kind of similar to what you see with Dak Prescott. You know, hey, he's going to put up those great numbers in the regular season for you, but when you get to the postseason, things are going to happen. And you know what? Those are fun conversations to have, too. But for fantasy football, Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott have been pretty damn good for a good long time. And obviously, the one thing that Kirk Cousins has that that Dak Prescott doesn't have this offseason is the fact that Kirk Cousins is coming off a torn Achilles. Now, um, at this point last week, um, this, this so if you're listening to this, it was last week. But for me, it was earlier this week. Um, Kirk Cousins was posting videos of himself working out, dropping back, throwing the football. Um, so it looks like he is getting ready to approach free agency. Like he is a plug and play for you're not signing Kirk Cousins at, at this point of his career. And, and, and maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'm being a naive and maybe the teams are being naive, but if you're signing Kirk Cousins at this stage of his career, you're signing him because you think you can win a Super Bowl. You're signing him because you think you can go to the next level in the playoffs. I know Kirk Cousins hasn't done that, but based on his production, look, Obviously, if Dak Prescott was on the free agent market, he'd get a lot more than Kirk Cousins because he's younger at this point. Um, But if those guys were to have postseason success, be damned. If those guys were to hit the open market, they're going to get a lot of money. Cousins has the injury, but there are teams out there who can convince themselves, look, Kirk Cousins is going to be a uh, is going to be a free agent. We have good weapons on this team. And I want I want to highlight that. You're not signing Kirk Cousins if your receiver depth chart is is completely terrible. Maybe I'm maybe I'll eat my words here, but I don't see the New England Patriots going out and signing Kirk Cousins, you know? Like I like I don't see that happening. I don't think you want to sign Kirk Cousins at 36 years old if you've got a god awful offense around him. That's not what you want Kirk Cousins to do. But Zach Robinson, the offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons, comes from the Sean McVay tree. Obviously Kevin O'Connell he comes from the Sean McVay tree, where Kirk Cousins has had a lot of success. If Kirk Cousins does not resign with the Minnesota Vikings, the Atlanta Falcons make a hell of a lot of sense. You got Drake London. You got Kyle Pitts. They don't have John New Smith anymore. They released him. You got a good running game with B. John Robinson. You maybe got some money to sign uh, another receiver or draft another receiver. That can make a lot of sense to me if Kirk Cousins does not return to the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know. Is there a lot to say about Baker Mayfield, Joe? I'd be shocked if he doesn't go back to the Bucks, and we kind of know what he yeah, is like, with the Bucks. Yeah, like, and he had his best season. Um, obviously, Dave Canales is gone. I think that hurt a lot of Bucks fans. Um, you know, they're like, damn, we got how does you know Bucks fans are sitting here thinking, 
how does how does Dave Canales get a head coaching job? You know, and Ben Johnson doesn't. Like, what the heck? How how do <laughs> we get? How are we the ones who lose our offensive coordinator? But it just kind of makes sense for Baker, right? Like, oh, dude, I finally resurrected my career. Why would he want to go anywhere else? But of course, when it comes to the Buccaneers, they have Mike Evans as a free agent. So there's a lot up in the air with the Bucks, but I don't think Baker is going to be one of them. I think Baker's going to be back with with Tampa Bay. Anything to say about Tannehill? We talked about him a little bit last week when we were talking about Arthur Smith and the potential landing spot for him there in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, if if Tannehill doesn't go to Pittsburgh, where is he going to get an opportunity to start at quarterback? Like, I I feel like it's kind of over for him otherwise. Like, he had a great run with Tennessee, but injuries have really kind of crippled him in recent years. He missed um, missed seven games this past year. He missed five games the year before. Tennessee's offense was not good this year. Tannehill had just four touchdowns in eight starts, seven interceptions. I mean, Tennessee didn't have a lot of weapons on the perimeter. Um, but Ryan Tannehill, after a good run in Tennessee, it feels like his days as a starter. Like, I don't think you're signing Ryan Tannehill to be like, like if you're signing Kirk Cousins, he's your starting quarterback. If you're signing Ryan Tannehill, and I, I, I even would put Pittsburgh in this category, you're starting, you're, you're, you're signing Ryan Tannehill where you're like, all right, we'll start him at the beginning of the season, or we'll start him. If Kenny Pickett can't get it done, that's what Ryan Tannehill is here. He's either a bridge or he's a parachute at this point as a quarterback. And I think, I think that's, that's what separates Ryan Tannehill, even though he's the same age as Kirk Cousins. I like that bridge or parachute, whether you're hosting game day or movie night, DiGiorno knows that planning a watch party on a budget isn't easy. You need the perfect setting, the perfect squad and the perfect eats. Luckily you're a game time mastermind. And you know that grabbing DiGiorno Classic Crust Pizza can bring home a dub because it's packed with half a pound of cheese, sauce, and other toppings and comes at an incredible price. Make the game-winning call and grab a DiGiorno Classic Crust Pizza from the grocery store today. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. You know how I roll, Joe. I wash it down with delicious Labatt Blue Lights. Whether you're golfing or skiing or... Talking fantasy football with Joe Dolan. Drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends. Live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Let's move on to some of these other positions, Joe. And I guess I'm curious. Let's talk running back because there's a bunch of them. Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, Austin Eckler. I mean, the list goes on. DeAndre Swift. Yeah. Tony Pollard's out there. Josh Jacobs. I I mean, and every single one of them has been connected to the Baltimore Ravens. (laughs) Every one of them. Uh, it might be like the year the Eagles went, uh, when Chip Kelly, uh, Howie Roseman's lost weekend, you know, uh, John Lennon used to call uh, his little fling with May Pang when he was separated from from Yoko Ono. He used to call that his lost weekend. Howie Roseman's lost weekend when Chip Kelly had control of the uh, Eagles front office and went out and spent like $90 million on DeMarco Murray and Ryan Matthews. Are the Ravens going to do that this offseason with the running back position? You know, the Raven, the running back for the Ravens is like the defense against the dark arts teacher at Hogwarts. It's just not a a comfortable position to be. You're not lasting more than one year because of injuries, final destination stuff. But the Ravens are going to try to break that curse. And I think the guy that people have connected the most to the Baltimore Ravens is Derrick Henry. Like, I just feel like that's the one where people are like, you know, we've got the... um, General Manager Eric Tocasi mentioned that they, they expect Keaton Mitchell to, to be back and from his knee injury at some point. And he gave them some good snaps. And, you know, maybe he's ready to contribute early or middle of the season. Um, and But Derrick Henry can come in there and provide them. Like, look, Gus Edwards had, who, by the way, is also a free agent. Gus Edwards, I talked about Ryan Tannehill being a parachute. Gus Edwards has been kind of that. Gus Edwards had 13 rushing touchdowns for the Baltimore Ravens this year. He was a half-decent fantasy football option for them. Well, isn't Derrick Henry just kind of a better version of Gus Edwards? Like somebody who can get it done in short yardage but can also bust off a long run? 
I think Derrick Henry to Baltimore makes so much sense, but if Baltimore <clears throat> doesn't sign one of Henry, Jacobs, Barkley, maybe even Swift, I would be really surprised at this point. Ross, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to bring back Gus Edwards. Um, the J.K. Dobbins thing's unfortunate. I think they of really course. like Keaton Mitchell. I would think that they would sign one of those other guys, though. And I'll be curious to see which guy they think is the best fit. You know, Henry feels to me like a, guy, a volume guy, and I don't know that they want to give him volume in Baltimore. I, I, I don't know if that's the route yeah, that's, that they take. That's interesting because he's always been – I mean, dating back to his time when he was, remember when, when he was young and he was splitting work with DeMarco Murray, like Derrick Henry, there was a couple of year period there where he looked like a bust where like, it felt like you were putting him in the game and he was gaining two yards in a cloud of dust. And it was like, man, like what's going on here? And then, then they decided at one point, um, what was it? They signed Dion Lewis. And they were giving way too much work to Deion Lewis because they thought, you know, we're going to have a thunder and lightning thing. And then they switched their offense and were like, what are we doing? Let's just give Henry the ball. And that's when Derrick Henry became, you know, Tractor Cito, you know, the guy who is running for 2,000 yards and 200 yards a game. He, it, You're 100% right. You've got an MVP quarterback and a, and a running back who basically commands 15 to 20 carries a game. Maybe, that's, maybe that doesn't work. But, I, I mean, stylistically, I do feel like he fits Baltimore. You know, I feel like it's musical chairs, Joe. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a decent chance most of these guys land back with their original team. But if they don't, then you see my, like, you know, like I think Jacobs with the Raiders and Barkley with the Giants and Pollard with the Cowboys. But if one of them moves, then they all might start to yeah. move. It's going to be fascinating. You know, Jacobs is probably the guy now. The, here's what's unfortunate. Saquon, Jacobs... Eckler, they're all coming off of kind of down seasons. Um, I mean, Saquon was in a completely broken offense. Jacobs was in an offense that didn't really work out great. Um, but Jacobs, after leading the NFL in rushing, he's dealing with some injuries, and he, and he runs for basically less than half the yards. He had 1,653 in 2022 and just 805 in 2023. But, I mean, if you're looking at Josh Jacobs and his skill set, I think I feel like he's a better receiver than he gets credit for. He's never scored a receiving touchdown. Um, but he has 197 receptions in five seasons. He can, he can do some of the three-down stuff for you. I think uh, if, if you're looking at these running backs, I think what pops out to everybody is, is Saquon is the true three down guy of this group, but Jacobs can give you some of that. And he's um, a little bit younger than Saquon. And he also has less wear and tear on his body. A fewer injuries than Saquon has, but uh, I feel like both of these guys with the salary cap rising, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens at this position because also compare the running back position and the players who are available to the wide receiver position and the players who are available. It is a great running back free agent class and a terrible wide receiver free agent class. Um, the best wide receiver available is Mike Evans, but, you know, he's age 31. What kind of contract is he going to get? Calvin Ridley is 29. Michael Pittman's the best out there at 26. T. Higgins got franchise tags, so I don't think he's going anywhere. And then you've got a bunch of guys who profile more as two or threes, you know, Gabe Davis, Darnell Mooney, Odell Beckham, you know, Curtis Samuel, Hollywood Brown. Are running backs, despite the devaluation of the position, are they going to maybe be able to actually say, hey, where else are you splurging, guys? The wide receiver class and the tight end class are not good. If you want to add a little juice to your offense, where else are you spending? The salary cap went up a significant amount. It will be interesting to see. Look, I know what the NFL says about the running back position, but are teams going to say, like, for instance, Houston with C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud's on a rookie contract. Nico Collins is on a rookie contract. Tank Dell's on a rookie contract. I mean, that's like the spot where you can splurge for a Saquon Barkley or a Josh Jacobs, right? So if you're not able to improve at this, this, this wide receiver position, where look, Gabe Davis is a certain kind of player, okay? I think we've we have determined that Gabe Davis is probably an excellent number three and a subpar number two. What kind of money is he going to get on the open market? So I wonder if there might be some splurge on these running backs and 
going to be some opportunities to see what happens for fantasy football. Really fascinating to watch. Is there a guy out of those, Joe, not knowing what situation they'll land in that that you're significantly higher on than the others? Uh, at, at wide receiver or running back? Running back. Uh, Jacobs. Um, I, I feel like if Jacobs goes to the right spot. Jacobs, I feel... o- Jacobs over Henry and Saquon. Well, that's actually a good point because – I feel like Jacobs, as the youngest and and the versatility that Henry doesn't have, stands out to me. Um, but like, I I know you you mentioned Baltimore as being maybe they're not going to have the volume for Derrick Henry. But if Derrick Henry lands in Baltimore, we know he's going in the top twenty in fantasy drafts. Like it's going to happen. Um, but I feel like Jacobs without knowing what the situation is, he would be the one. If I were a general manager, if my owner came to me and said, "All right." I, I know you don't like the running back position, but I do. And we need to run the football and you need to sign one of these guys to a multi-year contract. I feel like Jacobs is the guy I would go for. And then I would go to Saquon and then I would go to Henry. And I think Austin Eckler, by the way, I think he might have to settle for a one-year deal. You know, Austin Eckler is interesting. If, if he can convince teams that it was all injury related, could he end up like in Philly with, with Kellen Moore? You know, Philly lost... Um, DeAndre, I don't think Philly's going to sign one of these big money money, money backs. Maybe they bring back DeAndre Swift, but Philly's going to have to ha- do something at the running back position this off season. You know, going to be interesting to see what Philly does. Uh, everybody always connects like the big money running backs to them because they want to see them in the Eagles' offense. I just don't think Howie Roseman's going to spend that money on a Saquon or a Josh Jacobs. And I would I would wonder would um. Would Kellen Moore even want Eckler yeah, in it's Philly? Possible. He didn't have the greatest experience with him, right? No. Like his one year. I don't know that he'd be standing on the table saying, we got to bring this guy in. Yeah, and like they struggled to run the ball because of injuries. You know, Eckler got hurt, and then, you know, Kelly had a couple of games. and But no, they, they, I, think, um, I think Philly's a really fascinating team in this market because I expect that they'll want to sign somebody, but I don't know if they're going to be angling at the top. Of the uh, of the running back class. By the way, the reason I brought up Houston is because Devin Singletary is also a free agent, um, and Damian Pierce Ross. You've talked about him, just not a scheme fit for what Bobby Slowick does. So y- you wonder if they're going to try to because of C.J. Stroud being on that rookie contract, get a guy in there who can who can be kind of a bell cow over the next two three seasons on a big money deal. Joe, is there a tight end that you're intrigued by that? Could be a fantasy starter or a high end fantasy starter, depending on the right oh. team, whether it's Hunter Henry. We talked a little bit last week about Johnu Smith, next stop Pittsburgh, Dalton Schultz. I feel like Dalton Schultz never gets any love. He's just good. I, yeah. I don't, why, why am I the only one that thinks Dalton Schultz is good? Because, like, um, because whenever Dalton Schultz is out there, um, it feels like teams are like, man. He's a seven, but I want a 10. And then the 10 has all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, has all kinds of clingy problems. And you're like, man, I want my seven back. Uh, that, that's what it feels like with uh, with Dalton Schultz. We can't all marry 10s, Joe. We no, can't we all can't. marry 10s. You and I both got lucky, Ross, you know, with our, um, uh, w- with ours. Uh, I've, I've got a, I've got, I outkicked my coverage with a professor. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but. Look, we, we can't all, and Dalton Schultz is going to be sitting there waiting for you if you, if you need him. Uh, it's a bad tight end class, Ross. Like, if you want to shoot for the stars, Noah Fant, who's 26, but the idea of Noah Fant's always been the, better than the reality of Noah Fant. And on the receiver side, you kind of already talked about it. It is putrid. Yeah. I mean, it is really, really bad. It I, feels I don't like- even know. Who who you like other than obviously Mike Evans? I, who's the guy that that people are going to try to get? I mean Michael Pittman, but the Colts need to resign Michael Pittman. It feels like you oh know, he's he, not going anywhere. Yeah, I don't think he's worst going anywhere. case scenario. They're going to tag him. They might have already by the time we're recording yeah. this. Calvin Ridley. Um, again, the the idea of Calvin Ridley this year was kind of better than the reality. It feels like going back to Jacksonville makes a lot of sense for Calvin Ridley, though. Obviously, he won't be tagged, but it's not a great receiver group. But there are guys who like you can sign. Like a, like a Gabe Davis, for instance, to be a solid number three for you. Or Hollywood Brown, if you want somebody who can stretch the field. Check him out on social media. He is the man. At FG underscore Dolan. 
Big fan of Joe. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We're at Ross Tucker Pod. Love those of you. Check us out on YouTube now. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Lessons learned from the 2023 season for fantasy moving forward next week. I'm stuffed. We're done. Thanks for tuning in to Fantasy Feast. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Even Money, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform.